Good day and welcome to another short video in our COVID-19 comeback series. My name is John Mitchell and I'm a corporate partner here at Williams Mullen. Today I'm joined by Forbes Thompson, also a partner in our corporate practice. As lawyers who represent commercial borrowers, we want our clients to have insight into how lenders operate, especially during these tough times. This will be the first in a series of videos aimed at helping borrowers navigate the current crisis. We will be interviewing two of our top lender lawyers who will share their experience and tips. They are Matt Cheek, who chairs the firm's financial services industry group, and Mike Miller, chair of our restructuring and bankruptcy practice. At the end of the program, we hope our viewers feel educated and empowered to have constructive dealings with their lenders in the months and years ahead. So let's get to the panel. Forbes? Thanks, John. Matt, Mike, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Mike, I had a preliminary question for you. I know that we represent a lot of, uh, of, of bank clients. Uh, how did, does this create any issue for you in terms of uh, dealing with these default situations? Um, hi, Forbes. Thank you. Um, you're right. Williams Mullen does have a large lending practice, and we represent a lot of national, regional, local lenders. So generally speaking, we're ethically conflicted from representing borrowers with respect to defaulted loans or loan workouts. But having said that, our lender clients don't object to us doing this presentation and demystifying the process of how lenders typically work through problem loans. And the reason for this, as we'll discuss in greater detail in a minute, is because this information hopefully will help borrowers navigate the process and improve communication between borrowers and lenders um, when problems do arise. And in fact, one takeaway that I hope people get out of this presentation today is that increased constructive and better communication helps facilitate the process and in turn, hopefully leads to better outcomes for both the borrowers and the lenders. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Matt, now let's talk a little bit about, this is obviously an emotional time for both borrowers and lenders. Let's talk about both sides' perspectives in a default situation. Uh, Forbes, thanks a lot. Yeah, we as a group here, I think we wanted to start this series off in the beginning, laying the groundwork with a little bit of the emotional landscape. There are some universal truths about a loan that's in trouble and the psychology, the human nature side of it, I think we wanted to kick things off by setting the table with this. And it's no secret really that um, people's success in business or lack of success in business is entirely tied up in their own personal identities. Uh, it's, it's natural and it's normal. And so when that identity is threatened, when things are not going well, uh, it's very normal for a borrower in distress to have a fight or a flight reaction. This is a normal human nature response when your identity or your person is being threatened. However, I think one of the things we're trying to draw out in this first session is that that natural reaction, while normal and emotionally rational, um, the fight, fighting the bank, fighting the world, fleeing, flight, uh, avoiding the problem, running from the problem, hiding from the problem, uh, while natural and normal, those types of behaviors are not necessarily as business-minded as they could be, and borrowers might want to resist these types of temptations. And again, it's totally understandable. Um, at this moment in the life cycle of a business and the principles running it, a lot of times there's a cascade effect where everything is all going wrong at once. Uh, this could mean not only that uh, there's problem problems with the business, there might be family members involved in the business, there could be family dynamics involved, there could be trouble at home, there could be trouble in your marriage, uh, your ego is threatened, you've got reputational interests in the community that are being threatened, threatened, your family legacy is being threatened, your life's work is being threatened. So this fight or flight mentality is normal. On the bank side, perhaps it's less fight or flight emotion uh, but there is a degree of pressure. Um, banks have regulatory compliance. They have regulators looking over their shoulder. There's credit officers looking over people's shoulder. There's the risk of loss, um, the regulatory implications for the lender, uh, fear of lender liability perhaps, and let's face it, some bank politics too. Um, perhaps 
Um, like I was saying, maybe less fight or flight on the bank side, uh, but still a, a, a great degree of pressure. So that's, that kind of sets the table, I think, for what we're going to talk about here. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Mike, so in terms of typical reactions for borrowers, are there reactions that are more helpful or uh, sort of communication that's more helpful or less helpful with the bank? Uh, there is, Forbes. Um, you can, as a borrower, do a lot to help yourself in a troubled loan situation if you communicate well with the bank and, and you run to the problem. What do I mean by that? Well, everyone's heard of the three C's of credit. Everyone's heard that expression. And the three C's are character, capacity, and capital, or others say character, credit worthiness, and collateral. But the most important, and I can't stress this enough in a troubled loan situation, is character. That means the lender's trying to determine whether you have the honesty and reliability to repay a debt. And your lender is a lot more likely to work with you if you are honest and forthright. After all, it's a shared problem. The borrower and lender have different reasons to solve the problem. The borrower wants to try and save its business and the lender is trying to repay uh, the loan. But the path to a successful outcome should be the same, at least assuming if the borrower is cooperative. The lender is going to decide early in the process whether the borrower is trustworthy and reliable and if it can work with the borrower. A borrower with good character will have many more options available to it, while a borrower with bad character is going to have far fewer options, if any. So what does good character look like in a troubled loan situation? Well, as stated earlier, it means being honest and reliable. It means running to the problem and being honest with your lender about any problems you're having. It means being forthright and engaging in proactive communication. You as a borrower uh, obviously are in a better position to identify problems early on. And rather than stick your head in the sand, you should be proactive and communicate with your lender that there might be a problem. If you're honest and forthright with the lender, you have demonstrated your integrity and your lender is more likely to try and work with you through any liquidity issues you may be having. On the other hand, if you hide the problem, your lender will be less likely to trust you or trust your ability to address the problem. So as you go through the process, it's important to be responsive to your lender, honor your commitments and promises to your lender, including smaller mundane matters, and appreciate any accommodations agreed to by your lender. Do not blame others for your problems, particularly your lender, or engage in any kind of drama or histrionics. Do not threaten to take complaints up the chain of command or to executives or worse, the media. That just telegraphs to your lender that you may not be worth the trouble. And if the lender decides early on that you're not worth the trouble, your options are gonna be a lot more limited. And in fact, I, let me say one other thing about communications with your lender. There will in all likelihood be a shift in communications when your loan goes into default. What do I mean by that? They'll probably shift the loan communications and loan management away from your relationship manager to a special assets officer. And the lender does this for several reasons. Workout officers have a special skill set in dealing with troubled loans that relationship managers do not have. In addition, a relationship manager may be too close to the situation or too close to you. And that familiarity may get in the way of addressing the issues or lead to mixed messaging or solving the problems. Also, by having a special assets officer deal with the situation, it allows the lender to communicate uniformly across all of its borrowers rather than sending mixed messages. So you're not gonna have a choice in that. So my suggestion is to expect it and don't resist it. In fact, embrace it. If you don't, it will just get you started off on the wrong track. And that goes back to, again, lender thinking you may not be worth the trouble and your options will be much more limited. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Matt, so let's dig a little bit more into the, into the communication by the bank. What sort of techniques do you see the bank using in communication in these situations? Right, so 
yeah, it's worth talking about this a little bit so that the borrowers kind of know what to expect. Um, there does begin to creep into the relationship a degree of formality in communication. So for example, the loan documents might obligate uh, that the lender communicate in writing, they might have to send to certain addresses, let's say by registered or certified mail, that sort of thing. And so uh, this, the, the paper might start to look a little formal in that manner. Uh, but, but this uh, written notice communication method is also used sometimes to jostle um, unresponsive debtors uh, into responding. Banks can't really sit around allowing their communications to go unheeded. So I'll be honest with you, everyone pretty much knows that uh, the, the, the joke is uh, no good news comes by registered or certified mail. So generally speaking, a lot of times we will use FedExes uh, to kind of, not only FedEx is the best tracking system, but it also adds an air of importance and drama and people start having FedEx packages dropped off at their house. Um, the other thing that, the debtor side should be aware of is that banks cannot communicate separately to different groups of obligors. And what do I mean by that? Well, you might have one or multiple borrowers. You also might have one or multiple guarantors. Um, sometimes those guarantors might be heavily involved in the business and they might know what's going on. But sometimes guarantors might be uh, passive investors who are really kind of not in the loop about the stage of uh, the business uh, or whether it's succeeding or not doing so well. Similarly, you might have spousal guarantors. So what's interesting, and I just think borrowers should be aware of this, is that when communication starts to come out and it starts to be formal in this manner, banks will be communicating uniformly to all borrowers and guarantors. And that means if there's that passive investor who hasn't really been involved or there's a spouse you know, he or she, they're going to start getting FedEx packages too, just like the rest. And that method of communication can frankly stimulate some attentiveness. Um, so on the one hand, I wanted to, we wanted to point this out uh, in case borrowers find themselves in a situation like that so they're not surprised. And on the other hand, you know, just to be aware that this is what's going to happen and don't recoil so much from this level of formality. Thanks, Matt. Got it. Uh, any other tips that you have, uh, just sort of final thoughts on how to approach the situation as a borrower? Well, you know, in this session, we're trying to set the table a little bit for the attitudinal or emotional or psychological side of this. And uh, my wife is a professional therapist. And so I came up with this analogy that a problem loan is a little bit like a troubled marriage. Um, and all of us know that sometimes marriages um, fail. Um, sometimes all marriages have hard times, but there are plenty of instances and you hear stories of marriages that go through a really hard time and then they work through their problems. They come through the other side of the tunnel and you hear these stories about these marriages that are much stronger because of it. And we also know stories where there's a crisp, uh, this divorce, um, fairly clinical, bloodless. We hear stories like that. Uh, we also hear stories, though, of divorces that are a complete bloodbath. Uh, lawyering up on both sides, lots of cost, lots of expense, lots of anguish, lots of tears. Both sides, you know, they get the divorce done, but not without pain and hardship. And it's sort of a lose-lose, if you will. Well, why am I using this analogy? Because there's this sort of universal truth to defaulted loans. And that is that the banks, believe it or not, they really want to rehabilitate this marriage. And they, they really want to do that for two reasons. One, because it's absolutely in their own self-interest. Um, the money is always going to be greener if you work the loan out instead of liquidating, instead of flame throwing the whole loan relationship. And the second reason is, and it's interesting, you actually find this pride in being there with a customer who's being forthright and communicative, exactly like Mike has described, and then coming through the other side of the mountain, maintaining that bank borrower relationship, which ends up being stronger than ever. Banks are very, very, very proud of those sort of success stories. And it's in their self-interest, but there's also something quite nice and um, civilized about that as well. And 
I think we wanted our borrower clients to hear that message right out of the gate here today. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention too is uh, everything we're saying here today and in this series is applicable not only to real estate developers on commercial real estate loans, so to working capital borrowers, businesses that have lines of credit and whatnot. So I think uh, in conclusion here, folks, we were trying to normalize some of this emotion, uh, normalize our borrower clients, explain that it's rational to have this fight or flight, have this emotion, but also inform our clients that, you know, if you know what to expect, and you know what the psychological landscape is, then perhaps you have the best chance for rational business-minded behavior as the process unfolds. Thanks, Matt. Mike, thank you also. Uh, really good information. Uh, we look forward to taking a deeper dive with you guys into the nuts and bolts of the default situation um, in future episodes. John? Thanks, Forbes. Well, that's a wrap on today's show. We thank you for tuning in and hope you'll join us for additional episodes. For questions about today's topics, please contact any of the panelists. Our contact information is at the end of the video. And please be sure to visit williamsmullen.com. Every week we post new resources to help your business make your COVID comeback. Thank you again and be well, everybody.